Okay, I can't go over time seeing as I'm next. Um, so this is just a quick few slides. So there's, Frank talked earlier on about um, multi-NUMA and going across data paths across multi-NUMA nodes and its performance drops. But what we were actually seeing was that before we could even get to that, there was no packets flowing. So just to look at some of the parameters that are used to set up multi-NUMA. Um, so device NUMA association, provisioning CPUs, and provisioning memory. OK, so physical ports. So you need to know, you know ideally, you really want to know what NUMA node they're on. So you can use something like LSPCI to find your NUMA nodes. Um, <clears throat> and then to find out what, to find your devices and then find out what NUMA node they're on. Okay, so for virtual ports, OVS DPDK will associate a particular NUMA node with them and DPDK will reallocate the memory uh, for that same node. So what you can do for that is you can use something like NUMA control to find out where your CPUs are, what node they're on on your system, um, and then you can use your libvirt settings your uh, CPU set and your uh, emulator pin and ensure that the VM is associated with the correct NUMA node. Okay, so provisioning CPU. So by default, um, OBS will provide a core on each NUMA node. So, I de so theoretically, you don't have to do this, but typically people do use the CPU um, mask and they will assign some cores from different NUMA nodes. So if you just you know, uh, assign them from one NUMA node, that means there's none on the other. So you need to look at wh where your cores are and make sure you have them provisioned correctly. Okay, so memory. Again, if you're using huge page memory, you wanna make sure that there's huge page memory on, available on both sockets. Um, so there's a few commands there. You can look at your mem info. To, to find out where your, your memory is. And um, you can set that through the DPDK socket mem. And on the, some of the earlier versions, that could be quite uh, tricky because if you put, the wrong, if you put the, the wrong numbers in, it can be a bit unforgiving in DPDK. So there is defaults provided for just one NUMA node. But if you want to use multiple NUMA nodes, um, you, can, you can set them. Okay, so when it doesn't work, what kind of thing do you need to look at? Uh, well, you can look at your, your OBS DB settings to see the DPDK socket mem and the LCOR mask. Debug messages, so the, the, the EAL arguments that are passed into DPDK are printed in the log, so you can check to make sure that they're there. Um, when a device is brought up, you can see the, the cores and the NUMA nodes that are used. Um, and also then if there is no, okay, so for before OBS 2.8, if there was no um, cores available on that same NUMA node, you would see a warning message like at the end here to say there's no PMD thread available. But um, I think Billy put a patch in and it's in 2.8 that as a, you know, that was rather unforgiving, but um, there is a kind of a backup now where it will use a, a core from a different NUMA node at reduced performance. And that's in from 2.8 onwards. OK, so what we kind of looked at, we set our kind of similar to Frank's diagram earlier on. I think he inspired me for this. Um, the CPU mask, we've set two cores on each, uh, on each NUMA node. And we've allocated memory on each NUMA node. And I have a blog there with a the link. OK, that's that one. <laughs>